long overdue to chat with you, but uh, I know in, in watching the play-by-play -play clip over the weekend uh, and watching the game and kind of all the things that went into the game, what was it like there? What was what was it like leading up to the Celebration Bowl with all the stuff that was kind of lingering around Dion and Jackson State while you guys were there just to win a football game <laughs> in the grand scheme yeah. of things? Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to tell you it's going to sound weird when I say it, it was really nothing new. We've, we've been in this situation many times. We've participated in the X-WAC Challenge twice. Each time we've gone in, all the talk has been about, hey, this, this SWAC school is really good. I don't know if y'all are going to be able to compete. Last year, we went down for the VX WAC Challenge against Alcorn. The Migos were there on you know, college game day. <laughs> hey, who do you think is going to win this game? I think the crowd is saying Alcorn. You know, like, uh, the Migos had picked us. The Seal at the Aquarium picked us, but the Migos <laughs> didn't. And so we're, we're used to going and saying, hey, like, I don't think you guys can – you guys are good, but I don't think you can, you can compete with us. And we're saying, well, we know what we can do, and we're going to come in and do it. Absolutely. Jonathan Duran, NC Central play-by-play. -play. Now, I just feel like it's high time we put some respect on the Eagles' name, but Coach Oliver, what was the mentality of going down there and then in post-game? How proud do you think he was of just getting the win and what they can kind of carry into next season? I mean, everything is, is about the pride of the school and, and doing what you're supposed to do for the team and for the university. But the mentality going down has been what's been same all year long and all during his tenure. He talks about the, the thermostat mentality. Um, and he was asked uh, after the, the trophy presentation what he keeps his thermostat on. He said 68, which I thought was insane. But uh, <laughs> the thermostat mentality, you can't, you can't get too high, you can't get too low. When something good, when something good happens, you keep playing. Something bad happens, you keep playing. And all year long, just watching this team as they go through and talking to the coaching staffs before the games and after the games and, and the, the, the pregame shows, they talked about how locked in the guys have been during each, uh, each practice and each game going, leading into the game. And just the fact that they've been so regimented and the fact that the last game of the season we played against Tennessee Tech, it was penalty free. Mm -hmm. The fact they've been able to be regimented and locked in and just being able to go out and execute is really what I think was led them to be able to win. Jonathan Duran joining us, NC Central play-by-play -play on the OG, alongside Candace Cooper, filling in for Joe Giglio today. I'm Joe Obvious. I wanted to go back to how you started the conversation about the, the general conversation around the MEAC and how nobody really gives them credit. I mean, if you go and look at the Celebration Bowl wins, it's it's MEAC. Uh, you, you mentioned the challenge. It's, it's MEAC. So... <laughs> why this is where and I will I, I will be completely up front and you know this I'm not I'm not really trying to kid people here my level of attention to what goes on in the MIAC and what goes on at NC Central for football usually gets diminished because we're focused on what's going on with the ACC triangle schools it's just it's just kind of the nature of our business here at 999 the fan but I'm not gonna just go in and start talking nonsense <laughs> You know, it's, it's like, all right, let me let me go to the HBCU outlet. Let me go talk to you. Like, all right, let's find out what the deal is. Rather than just making these proclamations like, well, there's Dion and, it's, and they're undefeated. So it's clearly got to be good. So why is there this kind of uh, misconception about the league and, and Central in general? I, I don't know how, what to tell you. I mean, I've I've been MEAC since birth, yeah. I'll tell you. So yeah. um I'm, I'm the youngest of five, all four of my siblings, plus my parents who met at the university, at Hampton University. Um, and so I grew up in a household of blue and white, right? Um, and I grew up in Illinois, and every year we go to Indianapolis for the Circle City Challenge, um, which is a fantastic, uh, sorry, the Circle City Classic. It's a fantastic HBCU Classic Invitational to go play uh, what used to be the RCA Dome. I used to go there every year. And, you know, all the time you see on, on Sports Center. Uh, you know, respect the MEAC, right? Every time there's a MEAC highlight that comes up. And we know that this our league is good, but you know the SWAC has so much history behind it because mm -hmm. you know you have the Gramblings, the Southerns, the Alcorns, the the Bama States, the Jackson States, the Prairie View A and M's, who for the longest, you know, on Sports Center they were talked about for how bad their football program was. And I'm so stoked to see how good they are now in Prairie View. But for us, it's just been like, oh, yeah, you guys are good, but, you know, you're just a little bit under the radar. And I think really one thing that I can say, just bringing it back to the game, you saw Jackson State went 12-0, and which is impressive. Mm -hmm. You know, all credit to them. But, you know, in our league, we went 4-1. and Our one loss was to South Carolina State, my alma mater, who won the Celebration Bowl last year. And somehow South Carolina State ends up going 
0 and 4 or 0 and 5 in league play because there's so many good teams in the MEAC. Every game that we played was a dogfight. Mm-hmm. You know, we're winning games like on the at the wire at Delaware State or having to close games out after going down 21 points in the first quarter at Norfolk State. There's so many good teams in our league. Jonathan, and you're sounding like an SEC guy right now. <laughs> Say, so a meat grinder. We're just out here sharp, iron sharpened iron. That's what you sound like. That's literally what I was about to say. That's what it is here. Iron sharpens iron, man. And the, the league is just so good and we build each other up because because we compete so hard and I think that there's just so many good quality programs in the league that like when you see teams that have like middling records then you, you win a league at maybe like five and two or six and one and somebody else in the SWAC wins it you know nine and no in their league and say well obviously they're better I just think the league the the level of competition in the MEAC is better than what people think that it is Jonathan during NC Central play-by-play so obviously you get the opportunity to see some great players on the field can you let us know for those who may not some of the key players that would potentially we could see on Sundays uh, number one, Davius Richard, uh, MIAC Offensive Player of the Year, Offensive uh, Player of the Game, Offensive MVP for the uh, the MIAC SWAC Challenge last year and for the Celebration Bowl this year. Uh, Davius Richard is he is an incredible student athlete. I mean, he's a great guy to be around. He's really friendly and he's a great leader. Um, and just the fact that you get all of that off the field and then he goes onto the field and regularly generates 250 plus yards of total offense by himself, right? You know, he threw for 174 plus ran for at least another 70 at the celebration ball. I mean, he can rattle off a 60 yard run if he needs to, but he can also stay in the pocket and dial up passes when he needs to, like, the fantastic, fantastic throw to uh, Quentin McCall on the sideline um, late in the uh, in the Celebration Bowl. I mean, he's just uh, he's so fantastic. There's really so many things you can say about Davius Richard. And then on the offensive side, Miak Defensive Player of the Year, Khalil Baker, um, four for four to start the year in interceptions. Took one back to the house against New Hampshire, who was number 25 at the time when we played them up in Durham in New England. Um, he's a really great guy, another great leader on defense. And then I got to give a shout out to the O-line. The coaches always talk about it happens up front. We have to dominate in the run game. We have to win on offense and also win on defense in the run game. And you have uh, Robert Mitchell, offensive lineman of the year, helping to lead the way for a team that ran for over 200 yards against Jackson State in the Celebration Bowl. So all three of those guys are people that you could look out for. No doubt. Jonathan Dern. Central play-by-play here on the OG. Hey, man, appreciate the time. Uh, no more scary ghost stories, as you said, uh, for Central in the Celebration Bowl. So that was great to see. Thanks for the time, man. We'll catch up later. Hey, no problem. Thanks for having me. Equal Happy pride. Holidays. <laughs>